Hello fantastic people, I hope you are doing great. Today we'll implement pausing. Okay, so here I have very simple um, game. I have 3D character that is moving using the set keys. Um, it is fully animated. The movement is based on rigid body. And here we have some animated trace. Um, their animation is controlled just by animator, so nothing fancy there. And then I have a water shader um, created using the shader graph, and basically it's time-based. Time and basically what we'll try to do, we'll try to pause um, all of those things without using time.timescale. Okay, so here I have the character. The character has a simple uh, character controller script, which is written by me. And inside that script, I basically move the character using the rigid body and um, I capture input um, using this player input um, component provided by the new input system. So basically, um, in the actions, in the input actions, I have the um, walk action with the binding of the FSAT keys. And basically, whenever any of those keys are pressed, um, I'm getting the vector to value. This is kind of relevant because um, we'll be pausing that, so it would be good just to give you a quick overview of how it works. So I capture all those three components uh, in the awake method. So here I have the onWalk uh, method with the parameter of type input value. The name doesn't really matter. Um, so basically how it, this is triggered is basically this player input uh, component, when its behavior is set to send messages, will kind of automatically under the hood call a method with the name on and then the action name. So in my case it will be the um, on walk and it will basically inject here the value that comes the if, from, from the player input obviously. So what I do here I capture that input then I modify the velocity of the rigid body and then I set the animation. Um, this is important because that means we have to pause all three things when we're pausing. So we have to pause rigid body, we have to pause the animator and also we have to stop capturing the input. So that's when it comes to the character. You see the trees are swinging and all of them are swinging different um, kind of matter so they are not synced together. And that's because they have this small script, which basically on awake um, just just randomize the um, the frame, the first frame. So here nothing fancy, and then we have the water um, with the shader created in the shader graph. And um, here the important thing is that inside of it, so this is what controls basically um, the pausing. We'll go, we'll kind of, we'll use it later when we implement the pausing, but it's good to actually know uh, what is happening here. So obviously the animation, can I zoom it? No, unfortunately cannot make it bigger. Oh, I can, beautiful. Okay, so you see this is animated and basically how it works is uh, basically using the time variable. And what I'm doing here, I created a, um, I created the parameter of type um, or property of type uh, Boolean called post. Um, it displayed as boolean here, but inside the code it's uh, int. And basically whenever it is true, then I'm using a start time. And if it is false, then I'm using the uh, time value. So this is um, basically how, how it works. So that means when, when implementing pausing, we'll have to switch uh, this post uh, value and then we'll have to update the start time. Um, so it stops nicely at the moment when we pressed the escape button. Okay, so here is the setup of the shader and um, water also has a small script, nothing fancy there. It's just set up to make it uh, writing the code a little bit quicker. So I have the material from the mesh renderer. So this will give us access to the shader and then those two, um, those two values that I just showed you uh, in the shader editor. So post and start time. So I think that's it. We are ready to actually write some code. Okay, so it all will be centered around two different scripts. Let's create them. So first one will be called poser and that will be like the post manager. So this will be the um, class responsible for um, capturing the pause 
input and then requesting pause from all the objects. So it will be mono behavior, obviously, because we want to have it in the um, sen attached to a game object. And now it should have two, um, two events. So first one will be public static um, action uh, called pausing. And then another one called unpausing. And then um, we will need also a variable to store the information about, uh, like the store the information if the game is paused or not. So let's create a boolean. Well, maybe let's make it public. Bool is paused and then public get and private set. We never know when we'll need that. So this kind of seems pretty obvious thing to be needed in several places. Normally I would make it private, but kind of I have a feeling that um, this might come useful. So then uh, we have to capture the input and we'll use for that the player input component. So we'll have to have the method called on pause because my um, action name in the um, input actions is pause and the parameter of type input value and I'm giving it the name of the underscore because I'm not going to use it. It's kind of convention to let other people know that, okay, this value has to be for some reason, um, but we're not going to use it. So basically what we're going to do on pause, we're going to check if the game is paused and then it means we have want to unpause it. So unpausing, invoke. Awesome. Um, in case you don't know how in uh, how the events work, um, you can find a tutorial somewhere there. Then, if it's uh, not paused, then what we want, we want to pause it. So pausing, invoke. Beautiful. Okay, and then obviously we want to flip the mm, variable. So is post awesome. So this will basically reverse its value. So that should be it for this script. Awesome. And then we'll need another one called um, pausable mono behavior. So basically what will happen um, will be extending instead of extending the regular mono behavior will be extending the Possible mono behavior, and then um, this will uh, basically allow us to add some extra pausing. So here we have this uh, script. This should extend mono behavior because obviously it has to be um, attachable to game objects. And now what we want to do, um, we want to make it abstract. That means um, nobody will be able to drag and drop this um, class directly, the script, or create an instance of it. What will happen, uh, what will have to happen is we'll have to implement specific possible mono behavior. So for example, a possible tree or something, right? And then this tree will be already non-abstract. So it will have specific behavior. So because at this point, we'll need two variables, uh, not two variables, two methods protected because we want to um, implement them in the extending class and abstract because we don't want to provide the body and I will get to that in a second avoid pause and then another one on pause so what will happen basically when we extended this class this class will have to be like kind of it will be forced to implement those two methods and what the abstract keyword allows us to do is basically we don't have to provide it here so we don't have to you know give any random implementation here because at this moment we don't know what will happen right what will have to happen because some objects may have rigid bodies some may have animators some may have some other magic stuff and so on so on so that's the reason we implement it um, such a way now for those um, for those objects we will have to have the on enable and also on disable and what we want to do here we want to subscribe and unsubscribe to the pausing and unpausing event so mm, 
or maybe just to make it nice we could name them on pausing on unpausing because this way basically this really suggests that we are responding with them to the pausing and unpausing event so over here on enable we do a pauser because it's uh, because the events are static we have access to them directly from the um, class name so poser posing and then on posing awesome the same thing for poser and posing and we want the reversed on disable so over here and let me have a look at the reference script if I didn't forget about anything nope that should be it so now let's implement it on the tree because that's the simplest of all the objects so over here we have the animator and we just have to change the mono behavior to pausable mono behavior and as i said this will force us to implement missing members boom on pausing on unpausing so on pausing because the animator is the only thing that bothers us here we simply set the, it, uh, the variable speed on it to zero and then on unpausing we reverse it so i'm just setting it to one uh, but sometimes you may want to cache the value so for example you could want to do something for example um, speed the um, float animator speed and then basically do that right so animator speed and then instead of restoring one restore animator speed because you may not know what is the value right so in my case it, those are simple animations but sometimes you may have um you know unusual case or or, or you know different values values for different objects and you just want to make sure that this will work this way as well okay so this should be it now what we have to do in our game uh, window or rather in the sun window we create an empty object and call it poser we assign to it the script poser and also let's reset its transform so it's nicely at 000 over here reset and we need to also add the player input component uh, to trigger the on pause um, message so we select it over here and then I have two action maps I change the default map uh, from the character specific to UI again that is um, basically how I set it up over here right so I have two action maps one is the character so I will be able to disable just this action map and then keep this one li live so whenever the game is paused or not and I think the only thing is to test it now let's have a look okay we everything works as expected so you see the trees stop swaying once i press the escape key awesome okay so time to um, pause or implement pausing of our character over here we have a simple character controller we change the mono behavior to pausable mono behavior and then we implement missing members which is the on posing and on unposing so for on posing what we want to do we want to set the animator speed to zero um, you may be wondering why we are um, setting the speed to zero instead of disabling the animator that is because if we um, that is because if we disable the animator and then re-enable it the animation will start from the beginning and we want to start from the moment it left off so then for rigid body we want to set the is kinematic to true and then input actions and that is the um, those are the actions that we have uh, connected there and then what we do we simply disable them so we can copy that and on on pausing we can simply reverse those values boom okay so for water 
we can do similar things so possible mono behavior implement missing members and over here on the material we have to set the integer um, post to one which is true so just a small reminder even though in a shader graph that's uh, stored as boolean the underlying value is integer so we have to set the integer so for unposing we'll have to um, basically set that to zero and then we also has to set the um, stored time which is float stored time and then time dot time so this is equivalent to the variable that we are using there so this way it will basically stop at this um, very moment um, this posting is not perfect for the shader let me show you why so now we have implemented that we start the game everything's all right i'm pressing escape and you see the shader stops nicely our character st stops nicely but the thing is have a look at the water pay attention to it when i press escape you see it starts in different moment so what is happening basically the time the real time is going forward that is obvious but when we store our time pausing so start time it stores a value for example this one and we unpause the game over here let's say so what is happening mm, we are missing all those frames over here so our variable stopped at this moment so that's the reason the mm, the water stopped right the shader stopped at the animation but because it's based on the real time what happened basically it mm, when restart or when on post it went directly to this moment over here so it did not go back to the start time but rather to the um, to the real time so the way i were i've kind of worked around that and this is a little bit more complicated so if you kind of if you don't work with the shaders uh, that are animated you don't have to worry about that uh, but basically how I um, managed to fix that issue is when unpausing the game I calculate the period of time that the post uh, the post lasted so to do that I basically take the current time so the moment I have now so this over here and I um, subtract from it the start time so this value over here so this will give me literally this value over here so the amount of uh, like the amount of time i'm missing so i'm having it over here uh storing it over here sorry and then when pausing the game i'm using it um, to set the start time so instead of storing the time dot time as previously what i will do now i'll basically store the regular time minus the elapsed time there is one more thing that i had to do um, basically in the shader itself so over here in the water shader there is small section which was added so previously you see this time was directly going from this node to the branching so if the game was paused i was using the start time if the game was unpaused, I was using the time. But now, when the game is unpaused, I use the time minus the elapsed time, which we set um, over here. And this allows us to have everything working as expected. Let me just have a look. And everything works as expected. okay so let's do la one last thing let's create the mm, the message right the post message so first i create the panel um let's call it post panel let's remove the event system because we are using the new input system not the old one then in the source image because this one you see has the rounded edges i don't want that i am selecting none this will give me just pure um clean 
uh, rectangle. Now I'm changing the color to something darker, maybe even block, uh, black, and then increase its opacity. Awesome. So that's the first thing. Let's zoom out a little bit. And then the second thing I will add to it is UI Text Mesh Pro. And now let's write there post. Let's make sure it's in the middle. So maybe I will first bolt, then in the middle. Awesome. Um, where are the options over here? Middle. And this should look all right. Let's have a look. Yes, that looks nice. Let's maybe make the text a little bit bigger. So, so something like that and just increase the size of it. Awesome. Over here. That will do it. And maybe let me think. Do I need anything else there? No, that will be all right. So when we start the game, it should be there now. Yeah, that looks all right. Maybe a little bit of outline. So outline or maybe let's use underlay because the outline is unfortunately inside, which is a little bit strange for me. Um, but over here we can have it um, going outside. So over here we just at this maybe one this will be a little bit more visible and will be pretty nice so let's just change this name to um, post text now the post panel should have the component um, canvas group this will allow us to set its alpha and its interactability we can for now unselect the blocks raycast and let's add new script. Let's call it post panel. Let's open it in Rider. We have to make it extend the posable mono behavior because we want to react to the post and unpost events. We implement the missing members. We don't need that. We know we have the canvas group component which we want to utilize so over here we have a variable for it then we do we add awake method we capture it in the awake method and when the game is paused we want to set the canvas group alpha to one we want also to set its um, interruptibility to true in case we have there some buttons or something else and then here we want to do the reverse boom now that should be it let's just make sure that by default it is set to the unpost values so we just select the post panel where we have the canvas group we set this alpha to zero and interruptible to false and let's test it now. And I'm pressing escape. Nope, something missed. Of course, I didn't assign the script. So let me quickly add the script and try it once again. Whee! Everything working as expected. Amazing. I hope you found this tutorial useful, love you and bye bye.